Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, and in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about how I went about decreasing my graphics card's temperature. This was an issue I was looking into for quite some time now, but never really acted upon it until now. I'm sure most of you guys already know this, but for the new subs or viewers, the graphics card that I've been using in my personal rig for the past year, past year and a half actually, is the MSI R9 390. Now this card has been serving me quite well since the day I bought it. At 1080p, this card performs amazingly, maxing out every game out there at this resolution, and even at 1440p with some compromises, this card holds up quite well. MSI's version of the 390 is one of the most popular variants out there, mainly because of its exceptional cooler and acoustics. However, there is one major problem with this variant that has plagued many of its users, which has resulted in really high and steep temperatures. The problem was that these cards were shipping out of the factory with uh, poor thermal paste jobs on the GPU die. Not all of these cards had this problem, but quite a few did and I was suspecting I may have gotten one of those cards as well, and it wasn't until later that I confirmed that, but I'll discuss that just in a moment. Diving further into this topic, I saw a considerable amount of threads and posts made on forums online about users talking about their coolers cleaning off the old paste on their GPU and reapplying new thermal compound with the addition of using something of a higher quality than what the car ships with from the factory. The majority of users that conducted a thermal repaste did report that their GPU temps got better, some said their GPU's temperature decreased by like 5 degrees Celsius, and some said that it even decreased by about 10 degrees Celsius. I guess the results varied quite a bit because of uh, the type of thermal compound you use and what applying method you used. Now obviously to do this you have to take apart the cooler and to do that you have to remove some screws from the back of the GPU. And as you guys may know, many graphics cards come with a warranty sticker that states something like if you remove this sticker then it will vo void your warranty and or if it will say something like if you tamper with this sticker it, it, it can also void your warranty. So just note that if you're planning on doing something like this then there's a good chance your warranty will be voided. However, I did hear from some people that MSI actually gave them the go-ahead for doing a thermal repaste on their GPU, and apparently this is one of MSI's troubleshooting steps that their technicians will explain to a user if he or she is experiencing an overheating card. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is true or not, the best option here is if you really aren't sure then call up your MSI service center and ask them if they are cool with you doing this. MSI actually has multiple RMA and service centers around the world to make things uh, easier for you, uh, the process for RMA is faster and easier, and I think that was a pretty smart move on their part. The RMA center here in southern Ontario is like a 40 minute drive from my house, so that's really convenient for me and is also one of the reasons why I consider MSI products when I'm shopping around. But anyways, I'm going a little off topic here, so what, what did I do eventually? I decided to take a crack at it for myself to see if it will help improve my GPU's temperature. If you guys have seen some of my videos in the past and have paid attention to the monitoring statistics that I use, then you may have noticed that my card's temps were around the high 80s and sometimes even the low 90s, and that just wasn't something I was really comfortable with. So I found a Reddit post on the AMD subreddit posted by a user named Mr. Assault 8 who had mentioned some brief instructions about how you can go about taking the cooler from the card and how he repasted the GPU die and what their experience was afterward. Following his instructions and the picture he posted, I was easily able to take apart the cooler from the PCB of the card. It was a matter of just unscrewing the screws from the back plate and the four spring screws holding the heatsink against the GPU die. The other things I had to do was carefully disconnect the LED wire and fan wires connected to the PCB and make sure you do this step carefully since these wires are pretty thin and delicate. After I had taken apart the cooler from the card, this is what was waiting for me. After seeing the poor thermal paste job that was done from the factory, I could see why my low temps were so high. It might be difficult to tell from the picture, but approximately one third of the GPU had little to non thermal compound on it. The rest of it was also uh, a very thin layer. So I did my best at cleaning the thermal paste. I used a Q-tip to get the paste off the sides, but there was still a small amount left just because the Q-tips I had on hand currently were very thick and fuzzy so I couldn't get into these tight corners and stuff. I then applied a fairly thick line of Arctic Silver 5 and proceeded to attach the cooler back onto the card. Putting the card back together was easy since all I had to do was do everything in reverse. 
After I had installed the card back into my PC and booted up into Windows, I launched Unigen Heaven and left it for about an hour. When I checked my temps afterwards, I saw that my card did not break 70 degrees Celsius. This was a huge improvement over the low temps I would get prior to doing the thermal, thermal repaste. In addition to the thermal repaste job, I decided that I could take this even further. The next thing I decided to do was to see how far I could undervolt my card. After doing a bunch of runs of Unigen and 3D Mark Firestrike, I was able to get my card down to negative 81 millivolts with the factory OC which is 1060 MHz to the core clock and 1525 MHz to the memory. The MSI R9390 undervolts like a champ and I probably could have pushed it further but decided to stop since, he, since I was pretty satisfied with the temps I was getting here. With these settings, I saw that the GPU temperature would hover around 66 degrees Celsius at the time of the testing. The gameplay footage you guys are seeing here was recorded recently when I was doing some testing of Battlefield 1, DirectX 11 vs DirectX 12. And as you guys can see, my card's temperature is at 68 degrees Celsius, sometimes hitting 69 degrees Celsius, which is a considerable difference from what I was getting before I did all this. Needless to say, I was pretty happy that I decided to go through with this. I can now game comfortably knowing that my GPU won't be getting hot, and this allows me to also run my overclock settings more often. Do I recommend doing this if you're someone that wants to reduce GPU temps? Definitely. That is to say, if you don't care about voiding your card's warranty, and also if you're confident in taking apart the cooler from your graphics card. So I just want to share this experience with you all, and hopefully some of this was helpful to you. Let me know your comments or questions down below, and like this video if you found it informative, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you guys for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.